What is good? We're back. We got yellow legal. <laughs> We're ready to roll. Um, if you could just fucking type that shit in, it would make my life a lot easier. But no. We'll, we'll type it at some point. I did already. Good for you. Um, I typed mine in. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. So, Not in the format I wanted, but whatever. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, all right? Go fuck yourself. No police in the king over here. Uh-uh. He like, hey, he, he's like, oh, can, can we chat for a minute? Uh, well, Matt, the, Matt, could you come to my office, please? This man had stats not including the last game. Ugh. I can't help that a certain website that made fun of this podcast at once, at one point, doesn't have up-to-date stats and doesn't include the fucking bowl game. Mm. He's mm. got the target share, though. <laughs> so, if you could tell, we are going to do uh, some class of 2023 talk here. Um, That's what we're going to call it? After, after, uh, you know, the season's not necessarily over for everyone, but there's probably some people that the season's over for. We stay pretty locked into NFL stuff in season. Obviously, we're watching some college, but not, you know, really diving into every little bit. So here we're going to kind of step back in and just uh, familiarize ourselves and the audience with kind of what's been going on with some of the higher end prospects. Pulled them from a different couple of different websites who had them kind of ranked and familiarizing ourselves yeah. with the 23 and if class. If we're missing someone that you like, it's, it, it's not an indictment on anybody. Put it in the comments below. Sure, put them in the comments. After you like, subscribe. Boom. That's the only way you're going to know if we talk about your guy that you commented below on. Um, Bingo. So it's not an indictment of who we like or don't like. This has nothing to do with anything. We're coming in here with a fairly blank s- slate, just like we do every year. And we'll, you know, by the December and January, we'll bring in individual profile videos of all these guys and really play and catch up here. We're going to do kind of a surface analysis, kind of catch you guys up with where they are, because I'm sure there's some people out there who have no idea what uh, Quentin Johnson's been doing. Uh, so... Not you as know. much as I thought he would have been doing, um, but so we're gonna we're gonna play a little catch up here with uh, catching up with the twenty three class here. So <laughs> is that what we're go. gonna call it? They're, catching up. With you the got like class. five name options in the beginning of that thing. I hate when there's too many options. <laughs> I can't choose one. <laughs> All right, so subscribe to see which one he picks. Let me know what you think we should name this <laughs> down in the comment section below. The um, comments that's going to already be posted after he puts a name. I can in, change so. the title I mean, change anytime it whenever I want. want. You come up with something good, boom, yeah. done. Um, so we'll just start with some wide receivers. We're going to hit the top five, six, seven, or eight. Uh, and depends. when he says top, it's it's the, the consensus guys Top-ish. that most bigger affiliates had kind of ranked in out there. So we'll we'll touch on those guys and then we'll dive. Like I said, so there's no bearing on whether who we like more or not. And yeah, if we, we don't talk in. about the person, you shouldn't draft him. Yeah, that's accurate. And shout um, out to the guy on the Monday live show who hit us with the question. He was like, who's your top five wide receiver in the 23 class? We're like, ah, maybe we should start looking at him a little bit. So surface level, we'll get into these yeah. stats. Not really going to break a, a ton of, of player down, but just have a, a kind of a general conversation about these guys and see see where they're at. So let's get it rolling here. We'll start with Quentin Johnston. Um He's he had a right ankle injury this year, um, which kind of vague, but was kind of in and out of the lineup, banged up, bruised, bumped. So that could be uh, somewhat of, you know, some games he'd come in and play a little bit and leave from what I was reading through all the news. Obviously, I didn't watch every TCU game yet. Um, I'll be watching them very soon. He's 21. He'll be 22 in September. Mm, it's a little old. Uh, well, a lot of these guys are, you know, a little long in the tooth. Um but he in 22, he played 11 games, 78 targets, 49 receptions, uh, 764 yards, five touchdowns, 16 missed tackles for us. That's pretty strong from the big fella. He's 6'4", 215, um, and eight drops. Decent amount of drops throughout here, too. And yeah. then some of these guys, if you look throughout their career, uh, like I know Addison will get to, they've kind of waxed and wanes on, on drops. Um, so, you know, not to be they too, too more concerning. more times on the jugs machine. Yeah, but, you know, just something that you want to keep track of. Yeah. Um, Yak, 374 yards for Quentin Johnson. Uh, Yak per reception, 7.6. Yards per route run, 2.86. ADOT, 12.2. In the slot, 15%. Uh, and then out wide, 84%. Um, yeah, and so looking through like the tops of 
like where these guys rank amongst other guys with, with any of those stats. He's not really in the top 20 of anything. No, you got to actually extend. I couldn't find any ones to cherry pick and be like, see, this is why he's good. You, you got to extend the, the score from 50 to 100 to even get him on the first page. And, you know, I'm not saying that's necessarily an indictment. I have watched some TCU. I know he's their guy, and they go to him in big spots. If we helmet it's, scout, and we haven't had a good t- TCU's wide receivers. We've had some guys that had some buzz, and they've all fizzled out. Sure. That doesn't, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm, but, all. I'm just saying. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you the things that are going to come. Things that are going to come out. Sure. People, people use that term, helmet scouting. I, I don't. I fucking hate it already. I mean, you know, Ohio State <laughs> hasn't put out a good quarterback in, in a very long time for a minute there usc was having Couldn't problems put out wide, wide receivers, receivers right? right you know uh and tcu has had a few receivers this guy's you know looking looks pretty solid he's fun to watch um and, and like i said bio he did go four two fifteen. yeah he did go Woo. in and out of the lineup but was was in there yeah. in some big spots for him and and had some uh pretty solid games uh, but dominator in the 58th percentile target share in the 68th percentile. So nothing crazy good there, but I don't think either of those are killer. Correct. Yeah. I Didn't mean, see a breakout age listed for him, but he's old. So probably not great. Yeah. I, mean, like, I, I think the lack of production also has a bit indicative of the TCU team as a whole. Okay. It seems that they kind of play a lot of different styles. Um, they'll, 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 they've kind of won games in all different ways. This one will get bit up. The next one will get spit up. <laughs> well, sure. no, they're, they're undefeated, so. Yeah, I mean, they've got a conference championship coming up this week, so obviously that's not in, factored into these yeah. numbers just yet. And um, that's always like when we're going through finding, like, where did this guy rank amongst the other guy, we usually filter for just we'll regular take, season and we'll not postseason. Play, we'll take the playoffs out. I don't know if this counts as – if, yeah, it does. Does it? Yeah. It says BG bowl game on it. So it, like when we're comparing everybody, we take out the bowl game or the or the championship game so that we don't like escalate stats yeah. that other players don't have a chance to get cuz they're not playing as many games. But when we give you the total stats, we're going to give you all the games that they have. That's kind of how I sort it. But for right now, all the stats we have for 22 don't include the postseason, obviously, because that's happening next week. If yeah. you're watching this, this video will live on. We're doing this right before the conference championships will hit this weekend. So Got K-State again, so that'll be interesting. He should be good to go, it seems. Um, but this is the most he has played in the slot. He had 6% and 8% in his previous two years. That's an interesting note. I can't really you know, speak on whether that's been good or bad. Um, another quarterback's been... You know, pretty solid most of the year, kind of getting it done in all different ways. Again, much like the team kind of goes as seems as he does. He just won the Davy O'Brien Award. They got a good running back. So anybody else got anything else you want to throw on Quinton Johnson? So, you know, Quinton Johnston. Um, yeah, no, call him Quinton Johnson. Yeah. Nothing necessarily outstanding here that really blows you off the chart stats wise. Um, but that seems like a lot of people like him and, and – High up there in in receiver rankings. Seems uh, like so. it's pretty pretty sure bet to go in the first round of rookie drafts at this juncture. It does um, all right. Let's move he's, on. Actually, one more thing. He's been clocked at a four four. Oh yeah, he's he's, he's so to be fast. six five and run a four four. I mean, that means he's good, right? Yeah, I mean, we talk. Well, obviously, we'll go through the whole combine thing, um, and that's. Definitely all a, a piece of the puzzle. He definitely looks fast on tape. Um, like I said, they, I feel like when I do watch TCU, they'll go to him in bigger spots and get big production out of him in those spots. Um, you know, having that. If he can go to the combine and score well, what that will do is then afford him the luxury of, you know, more chances and more opportunity to uh, really excel and, and give – Give, give really the coaching staff that would be drafting him with this good athletic testing, you know, make it a lot easier to draft them because you don't have to fight anything of saying, well, he's not athletic. Like it gives you a nice little leg up to to get better capital. So always important, but not something that we necessarily live or die by. To be six four and fast is always good. Let's go to Jordan Addison. I think, you know, coming into this season was probably my favorite receiver. Um not saying he's there now haven't evaluated anything necessarily i've watched a decent amount of pac 12 after dark um it's easy to watch football when the kids go to bed it certainly is and and caleb williams is wow, but they get up so early absolutely ridiculous mm. um yeah at 24 class though <laughs> quarterback wise 
looking a whole lot better. Um, Jordan Addison had a leg injury this year. Uh, so that's kind of kept him out of some games. It was kind of vague. A lot harder to find injury stuff. If they don't have a, to tell you. If they're, well, yeah. especially if, you know, the NBC Edge or Roto World or whatever was there used to at least you could go do an okay chronological right. order kind of deal. And now that's kind of not around. So that's, that's got to do a little bit more digging through a bunch of stuff. I found leg injury. I'm sure maybe if somebody's a USC fan, they probably have more specifics on exactly what was going on. Um, and if, any, where, if anyone knows where to get the college blurbs from – of injuries for free where they're like doing them you know roto world used to do it like every oh yeah just like the pros just like those blurbs they would have them for the for the college players and then found a reddit string where it was like yeah well they're not doing that anymore and i forget there was somewhere else you could get it but you had to pay for it and it it wasn't like that in depth and i just yeah. and then someone else was like yeah you gotta track every single like beat rider for those schools basically keep track on of it. twitter week by yeah. week and then someone else was like do you have a list of those guys to track yeah. there was like radio silence like yeah so all right so tough tough to find out they don't have to de- de- devolve or de- uh, divulge divulge as much information in college he's like he's got an injury yeah, yeah. he's got a leg injury yeah right you know? so that's what we got here upper body injury he had 10 games missed a few um obviously a big part of this offense um, in 22, he had 70 targets, uh, 54 receptions, 810 yards, uh, 15 yards per catch, which eight all touchdowns, those, six missed tackles, forced, and two drops. All those numbers way down from 21, where when he was, was the, when he was the offense, he did have. This is out of 14 games, so that's four more games. But 144 targets, 100 receptions, 1,593 yards. More yards per catch, 17 touchdowns, and 21 missed tackles for. So doing a lot more Yeah, that I mean, he past did, year I mean, with Kenny Pickett. I mean, he did win the Blitnikoff Award last year, so. Yeah, I mean, he he had, in, in going back to the drop real quick, he had two drops this year, talking about the fluctuation. 11 um, last and then, year. And which was a 3.6% drop rate. And this, and this uh in 2021, he was at a 9.9 percent drop rate with 11 drops. So, you know, obviously a lot more volume going down over there with the 144 targets. Well, it's easy um, to extrapolate; you just double it, and it goes from two to four. Right. Um, so big, big, uh, some decent drop numbers there, but not as elusive as I necessarily thought he would be in this particular uh, season. Um, the leg miss. injury must have a lot to do with it. He he's clocked at a four three nine as well, so super fast guy. Yeah, I mean he six had foot, s- only one hundred seventy five pounds. Not that the sizes I think are getting overridden right now, right? With like Devonta Smith. Well, I don't much. think the Devonta Smith thing is the best case, but um, no? I don't I don't think people care as much. Yeah, Hollywood Brown's probably a better. They obviously operate a little differently just size wise and not being super scared yeah. of them. You're not getting, it's not super duper physical right now, overly physical needing to be a, and really going over the middle of the field and having to worry about taking a monster shot and all that kind of stuff. Um, not that Devonta Smith is bad, but I don't think he's, his case is like, Oh my God. Yes. A hundred percent knocked out of the park. You know what I mean? Uh, but getting back to the, uh, missed tackles for six this year, but 21 the year before, uh, I, I think elusiveness and, and yak is, is a big part of it can be a big part of this guy's game. The yards per route run have been 2.99 and 2.94. That's, that's, that's strong. fucking that's strong. 14th. Um, you know, the yak still pretty decent this year, 393. And then last year with all that other volume, 655. Um, so those those pretty strong numbers. Yak per reception this year, 7.3. Last year, 6.6. Um, so. Um, and then uh, out wide a good bit more this year than the previous years. Now, I don't know if that's just the way the system's designed or if they already had a slot or what, but um, he was at 75.6% wide and 22.7% in the slot, whereas last year at Pitt with that big production, 68% in the slot, 31% uh, out wide. So, um, again, need to dive into this to see what I like, how I like to see him be used, um, but uh, either way, strong numbers here. Going to also have strong draft capital here. Yeah, you got to think he's at worst a day two pick, but I think he's pretty solidly day one. Yeah. 
especially with that 21 tape that he yeah, put down. And yeah. then the metrics from an analytical standpoint are pretty awesome. Uh, college dominator, 36.2% in the 74th percentile. Target share in the 80th percentile. Breakout age in the 96th percentile. That's good, right? 96th yeah, percentile? Pretty strong. I think Brian Edwards had a breakout age of like 17. He was can't miss, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now he's uh, currently on the cheese practice squad. Right now the boy missing. <laughs> <laughs> MIA. No, he's... Yeah. Not in Miami anymore. Was he in Miami for a second? Never. Never? No. No. He was, in the, he was on the Raiders. He's on the yeah. Raiders, and then he was with the Falcons. And now he's on the Chiefs practice squad. The Dirty Birds. <laughs> Anybody got anything else on Jordan Addison? Nope. Moving along. You want to go Smith and Jigba next, or you want to go booty, 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 rocking all around? <laughs> Boote. <laughs> well, it's booty, 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 rocking everywhere. Well, it is sure. definitely rocking everywhere. Rocking everywhere. I found you. I found you. A little bubble sparks. Kayshawn Boote. Boote. All right. Well, let's go to uh, Kayshawn then. A uh, little bit little bit on the younger side where, as far as mm. Quentin and a little, little younger than... Uh, then Addison, who is Addison, will be at 21 in January. Looks like uh, Kayshawn will be 21 in May. Um, so I've got like a full year difference. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry, so sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's four I months. I was looking at Hyatt. Ten games for for Booty. <laughs> I don't know. It's Booty. I'm pretty sure it's Booty. Uh, it's booty sounds better, though. 62 targets, 42 receptions, 431 yards, 10.3 yard per reception. One touchdown, seven missed tackles forced, and seven drops with a 14.3% drop rate. Really, um, like, not uh, having a good luster, year. Lackluster, I'd say. Started off very slow. A lot of hype. He he was like, he was like at one point, he did the he did the thing where he deletes the LSU from all his Instagram stuff. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, that's... Back on... Six back. foot, 205. want to throw that in there. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what you're looking for. Yep. That's ideal right there. Yeah. Um, but again, seemingly lackluster. If you're an LSU fan, let us know below of how and why, or maybe you don't think that at all. I think he has had some some decent games. He's definitely started off slow and it's come on a little bit of late, I think. But the one touchdown, you know, pretty pretty yeah. eye popping. He had nine nine last year. Maybe just him and uh, who they got Jaden Daniels. Daniels. Maybe yeah. they're just not simpatico. Simpatico. Um, so I don't I don't really know exactly what's going on there. 48, 42 receptions this year to thirty eight last year. Um, you think there's, there's a chance that he comes back or transfers? I mean, not out of the realm of possibility. That's a good call. Seem, seems like that there was enough hype that if he has a good that if he thinks he'll have a good combine, then I think he'll probably have fine uh, draft capital or you yeah. know draft status rather. Yeah. Uh, but. Could you see a transfer or a or another year out of him? Projected to run a four three seven. Yeah, which that that would do it. I mean, I can't imagine. That I mean, people I would were say, so yeah. hyped about this guy without him being an athletic freak. I would I would say if he comes out and they say, hey, you could be a second round pick, then he must might be. Yeah. Well, he 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 did it. He broke out very early too, at age of eighteen point three, which is in the ninety eighth. Yeah, he had his all percentile. Definitely had his best season as a freshman. Target share of in the sixty third percentile, college dominator in the sixty ninth percentile. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So not not the worst dominator in target share, the breakout age, you know, we'll we have to have John Bauer on to tell us which one of those matters more. I know they take all of them into consideration, not an analytical beast over here. I do like, like break, to look the at the numbers and see what it is. Score. I know, but which one matters more, breakout no, or dominator? There, there's, there, there's a super one that they put together. Mm. It's a like super, a super saiyan. I'm just but one of them you. has to weigh more than the other. You know what I'm saying? What's I mean, they both here? probably have a correlation below like. Well, what's the causation though? You know, <laughs> that's the, the R squared. That's, reverse to the mean. That's R squared. That's where I usually reverse to. Uh, Someone just unsubscribed and tuned out. Anything else? <laughs> anything else on uh, on Boutte? What are we thinking here? Uh, he I could mean, be a value here based on this year, you know. Yeah, I just don't know. I, I've 
seems like he'll come out and run a good combine and people will probably like him and he's got the breakout age and all those kind of <laughs> things. They're not going to care about the production necessarily. Oh, people fucking love that production though. They do, but I mean, they, they can make up reasons why. Sure. And if, if there's some other good things pointing to, if like you said, I think there's a reasonable chance he could come back. Um, but if somebody tells him, which they probably are going to tell him that he could be a, a, a day two guy, then uh, it probably wants to uh, get out of there. But didn't seem like a happy, happy soldier. So maybe that's sort of what's leading to uh, kind of what's going on here. I know Dane Brugger just put out a mock. Mm, Daney. Well, while you're doing that, I am going to uh, keep it moving with Josh Downs. Maybe uh, out of these guys outside of Addison, maybe Downs has been my second favorite so far. Really? From what you've seen or just looking just at from the what statistics? I've seen and then the statistics. Um, obviously, he's got a very good quarterback as well. Drake May is, you know, right now being regarded as the next best thing ever. Yeah, he, yeah. Um, Strong I've, name. I know some. Well, Drake may be good. Some people are, are saying that he won't leave because of he's got family ties there, but um, Drake May could be on the move. Anyway, uh, Josh Downs, 21, going to be 22 in August, so people aren't going to like that. He did miss some time this year as well uh, with a left knee. Had to do some some digging for that, trying to just keep you abreast of some injury. But none of these guys have seen – Quinnen seemed to be the lingerer, uh, but the rest of these guys you know, seem to be seem to be all right, although Addison, a little iffy. Um, Josh Downs, 5'10", 180. Yeah, 10 games this year, 104 targets, 83 receptions, 929 yards, 11.2 yards per reception, 11 TDs. Uh, six for sixth. Six uh, in missed tackles force, three drops, 3.5% drop rate. So that's, that's pretty strong uh, stuff right there from old Joshua Downs. Now, yeah, 83 receptions, that's good for seventh. On... Um, on PFF, it says that he is not draft eligible, which I've read and looked up several what, different things Josh that Downs? Josh Downs is draft eligible. I thought he was draft eligible last year. It says right in this corner right here. Yeah, I saw that but, earlier about some, but somebody I'm, else too that I'm like, I'm I read, in so many numbers, they got to mess one of them up. I read multiple things and that he's uh, he's a junior. so He's on so a bunch. He's on both mock yeah. drafts that I had looked yeah. at. For, Just had to double check. You know, yeah. you don't, don't want somebody in the comments being like, he's not eligible. So, um, Let us know. Like, subscribe, you know. But 331 yak, 4.0 yak reception, 2.16 yards per route run, 8.9 a dot. Um, Under 10. And then the slot percentage. That means he's bad, right? The slot percentage was 81.6%. Um, and out wide uh, was 15.1% uh, here. So. Those numbers are quite a bit different from, not quite a bit, but different from what they did in 2021. He was only outside 2% in 2021. Um, so, so is that a sign of maturation? I don't know. It's a different you know, scheme. Different scheme. He is kind possibly. of small to be out wide. He's a little bit on the smaller side. That's you know, 5'10", 175. People aren't going to love that, I'm sure. But that's fine. I don't, I don't think, unless you're just like a... Uh, a very very small guy. I, I think that's unless you're Tutu Atwell. Um, I don't think anybody really necessarily yeah. cares. It's, Tutu's it's, been getting probably not gonna bit, probably not gonna you know those weights and sizes are gonna keep you probably down out of the out of the top unless you're really just dominating the top top. But it which still could be dominator in the seventy second percentile at thirty five point six target share in the ninety nine. Percentile yeah. oh, at 39.2 percent breakout age 19.1, which is good for 87th percentile. So, people are gonna definitely love Josh Downs if you're into the metrics. Also, getting good, you know, uh, important to note like, like a lot of these guys are that are better are, are that we've talked about. Johnson Johnston is getting good play from his quarterback. Uh, for the most part, obviously they're like we talked about in the conference championship. Jordan Addison, you know, is getting has the next quote unquote Patrick Mahomes throwing him the ball. You know, Drake May is throwing downs the ball here. So a little bit of a common theme of guys who are, you know, Smith and Jigba has CJ Stroud throwing him the ball. Um, and we can get into him next, but obviously not too much on the 2022 season for him. Um, so Josh Downs, four, four, seven projected 40. Yeah, he, he's he's. He's a lot of fun to watch. I've, I've watched 
decent amount of UNC this year. Really? Um, yeah, they just seem to always be on when I'm flipping around. Plus, you know, Drake May. It's like I'll watch. I'll watch the, the good quarterbacks. Are they going to beat Clemson this weekend? I don't know. If, can I mean is DJ any good? Could he could he just score some points? Just give it to fucking Will Shipley. That's all we got to do. All right, you want to go Smith and Jigba next? Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, obviously, not a whole lot in the uh, 2022 realm here. No, but that 21. Yeah. 112 targets, 95 receptions, 1,595 yards. That's 16.8 yards per reception. Nine touchdowns, 19 missed tackles forced. Only six drops, which isn't terrible compared to the rest of these guys. College dominator a little down at forty in the forty second percentile at twenty six percent target share, not spectacular twenty two point seven percent which is the sixty fifth percentile, breakout age still pretty decent in the seventy fourth percentile at nineteen point six, so not the worst metrics. You saw what this guy can do, right? You saw what this guy can fucking do in in twenty one. Yeah, right? those those twenty one numbers are better than pretty much any number up here, and it's almost right. as if you know. If maybe not playing this year was almost a could, could wor- end up working into an advantage if he comes out, maybe he stays another year because no way. Um, who knows? You never know. He's I mean, six foot one ninety seven. He's pretty young. Birthday. I know. I know. We've talked 20. about talked about this a few times, but I mean, I think it's gonna start fucking happening more and more, man. Like these guys are gonna stay around because they can get paid. Like, I think your boy probably... from Penn State just went back. He's was one of the best offensive linemen in the He's draft. Also, he turns twenty next month. Which is wild. Yeah, I mean, he, he could have got fucking six contracts if he would have got to the league. But these guys can get their money. Some guys actually like playing college football and can, could make fucking, you know, $10 million in their career or $8 million in their career, get a degree, and probably still most likely play in the NFL. Yeah. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying that's right or wrong, but, you know, there's it's, I don't think it's as big of a, yeah, he's definitely coming out as it's it's been in the past. I think you got to start weighing – there's possibilities of, of these classes really kind of changing. I mean, we saw Najee and ETN do it before that shit was even really super prevalent. And now it's, you know. Before they could get more money than they would might make. Yeah, they're talking the about NFL. if Drake May just came out, that somebody would probably pay him $10 million to go to their fucking school. That's absurd. You mean to transfer? Right. Like they I mean, were like, I mean, like one of, I mean, like what if Ohio State was just like, hey, we're gonna give ten, our boosters are gonna get ten million together, we're gonna give you an NIL deal. Now it can't come now, from the boosters. Now, now, sure it can. Yes, yeah, come sure from can. wherever you want it to come it, from. It it just it just goes into a collective, right? But the, but it's coming from the boosters. It has to come from like you guys Nike want, or something. You guys right? want to pay? No, you guys want to pay ten million to have fucking May throw the ball around next year, and maybe then Marvin Harrison and Smith and Jigba. Are just two ridiculous offensive. I mean, shit. Qu- I, 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 on I'm, I'm pretty chest. sure. I'm pretty sure Ohio. St- I'm pretty sure Quinn Ewers got a million dollars at Ohio State. And never played. A never played down. it down. I think he might have got more than that. Then he went to Texas and got more money, and now he's probably going to get replaced by Archie Manning. Arch, Arch, whatever. Um, Arch got smoked in his uh, college. I saw that in the, in the freaking state quarterfinals. Mm. By some Bust. by some <laughs> by some called University Lab. Uh, yeah, that does sound a bit odd. Weird name there. I heard I I, I heard some rumors that like twenty four sevens like stuff is shady. Like they'll like you can pay to like like I heard that a lot of people were like, no, oh, the Mannings are paying for him to be where he's at. Like he's a per he's perfect. He's like a perfect rating on twenty four seven. Hey, he's a Manning. He's, he's got good Levi's. What can you do? Those are jeans, kids. You can't fight God, you know? <laughs> That's it. You can't see you, so you can't fight something you can't see. Um, I used to have a friend. I was like, I don't know about fake boobs. He's like, if I can touch them, they're real. <laughs> I don't know what that had to do with God, but not being able to yeah. touch God. So I do Where think, exactly did this angel touch you? I do think that there is a chance that some of these guys come back. Um, the mock draft I saw had um, JSN, had JSN and Addison, and somebody we're going to talk about all first shortly, rounders, all first round. Yeah. Um, so I, again, killer year. Maybe it was in his favor that that he didn't play this year because none of these guys have come out with crazy stats, and let twenty twenty one is going to be the one that you look at. 
Um, and then again, maybe he doesn't come back because, or maybe his stats would have been affected this year with the emergence of Marvin Harrison, Harrison yeah. Jr. Yeah. So, you know, things that could have worked against him. I know it stinks not to play and it stinks not to have him. And, you know, people I'm sure will be upset about it, but you know, a 91.7 of his grade here, not that that is necessarily anything, but Jay Wayne read off the stats and, you know, just a rock solid player and, and was, is going to be regarded in the top one two or three of receivers in this sure. class pretty yeah. much regardless so um and you know again maybe you kind of were talking we talked about it on the live stream like probably stayed number one for you i mean yeah like again none but of i these can't guys, knock someone for an injury like i can't knock someone yeah. for an injury especially when it's not an injury that's not like a long-term concern no you sir what is it um do I, we know what the injury is i think it's like an ankle injury a ankle or maybe a foot i think yeah Ah, uh, foot. You got a screw in there? No, it wasn't a. No, it wasn't a surgery. Not a screw foot. Just, uh, just couldn't get it right. So hopefully, couldn't hopefully right, that's not a tight. sign of hey, we go to the combine and get that same injury hurt again at the combine, and maybe we do need some surgery or something. So hopefully, it's something that they rest up and get. Get well. Then you get a deal on him, right? Um, you fuck around, maybe, fuck up the combine. Or maybe not. Somebody might be like, "Fuck it, I'm just yeah. still gonna draft this guy." I remember we're what he the, did. We're gonna do. I remember it. what he did when he was doing it. We'll get him in here. We'll rehab him, and then we're gonna have a sick. I meant for your rookie drafts. Yeah. If if they blow the combine for whatever reason, if he, yeah, sure, possible, possible. All right, let's keep it moving. I got Zay Flowers here, five ten, one seventy two. He's. Uh, probably the oldest prospect so far. I'll be 23 in September. So 22 now by the time the NFL season starts next year, 23. That's like Christian Watson age. Woof. That guy stinks. (laughs) So can't draft a 23 year old rookie. Um, Yeah. Yeah. With, with your dynasty leagues that took the last three to five years. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Um, But Zay's, Zay's 5'10", 172. And, and, you know, mostly caught my eye with the production. He's been at, been at uh, BC for a while. They got a decent quarterback. Um, he's not great, but yeah, he was used to be at Notre Dame. Uh, I can't remember his name right this uh, second. Yeah, but he was think he was at Notre Dame before. Uh, but twelve games for Flowers, one hundred and twenty four yards, seventy eight receptions, um, one thousand seventy eight yards, thirteen point eight uh, yards per reception. Phil Yurkovich. Yeah, twelve TDs. So that's one of the stronger numbers of that for for these guys so far, and then. 15 missed tackles forced, nine drops, 10.3% drop rate. Uh, good yak, 503. Yeah. Um, good uh, yards per route run, 2.22. A dots over 10, 10.4. Slot. Just barely. 32%. Wide, 66%. Um, so. College dominator in the 73rd percentile at 36.1%. Target share, 83rd percentile. Not not bad at 27.3%. Breakout age, 20 <laughs> They like it to be under 20, uh, but it, that's in the 62nd percentile. Yeah, for your number, metrics. Number six in targets in, uh, on the year there. Uh, 124 but, is a lot. But a pretty a pretty strong season. Um, he has mostly been out wide. He, he mixed it up 50-50 his, his sophomore year in the slot and out wide and then stayed – he mixes it up a good bit. Like I said, 66 to 32 slot percent, 74 to 25% slot percent. Um, so it seems like he can move around a little bit. Is a little bit on the smaller side at 5'10", 172. But, um, I have 178, but all these numbers, are, no matter where you go, it's a different number. We can't know anything. All right, combine, all right. Until the combine. <laughs> yeah. Although the combine isn't even a real metric because they like change their weight to run certain drills better. So then they'd be... All di- right, fine, fine. I'm 127. Yeah, in your bra. Um, I'm a brunette. (laughs) Says here you're a blonde. (laughs) But that's not true. (laughs) You stuffed her like a Thanksgiving turkey. All right, all right. Zay Flowers projected 4 3. Woo. So a lot of athleticism so far throughout all these guys. Uh, some some big production with some of the smaller the the downs and the flowers. Not not the biggest thickest guys, or the thuggest ruggest bones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Who feels so good when he jokes? <laughs> but I like I like I like Zay Flowers so far. Um, the little bit of t- uh, highlight tape that I watched, and, and obviously he's been at out of BC Boston for a College. While. Did you say that? Yeah been at bc for a while so 
Um, Simmons is old. You know, another just another guy to keep the eye on. I think he'll be up in the mix of these top guys. Yeah, probably um, day two guy. Throughout here, so has anybody got any other receivers, or you guys want to move on to running backs? No, nah, I think we'll I think we'll call it once we get done with this, and then maybe make the running backs a separate video. So you have to stay tuned. Make sure you like, subscribe below. I, I got to do two more. We got two more guys okay. that, that I know. I don't want to get lit up in the comment section for not doing it. So this guy probably should have been at the fucking top if we're doing like statistical, uh, impressive. 23 class top wide receivers is fucking Jalen Hyatt. Yeah. This man slaying. is ridiculous, right? Tennessee 6'1", 180. Little little light. I didn't expect that to see that 180 number, but I mean 6'1", decent height. Uh, birthday in 21, 2001, so I think that puts him at 21 years old. Um, tw- it, it, it would depend on when 20, in 2001. Don't worry. You can just keep going. A ridiculous jump from 21 to 22, right? So in in 2021, 32 targets, 21 receptions, 226 yards, two touchdowns, nothing really to write home about. 22, he's lighting the fucking world on fire. 89 targets, 67 receptions, 1,267 yards, 18.9 yards per carry, 15 touchdowns, only five drops, eight missed tackles forced, crushing the yak with 538 in the yak per reception, crushing the yards per route run, 3.28, ADOT at 13.6. That, I mean, I don't need to read any other fucking stat out there besides that one. Slot, 83%. Out wide, only 12%. Unique to see him crushing this hard from the slot, especially downfield. Um, I couldn't find, like, dominator target share and breakout age on this man. I think they're a little behind on his he did, he, late breakout He's doing here. just fine this year. But if you um, look at the stats, he's third in yards, 20th in yards per reception. If you filter that out to 50% of the targets, he's second in yards per reception. He's tied for first in touchdowns, fifth in yak, fourth in yards per route run, 19th in dot. Like, he was at the top of all these statistical categories. Yeah. Like he was, you see his fucking name, no matter what stat you filter on. And if you're watching these games, he's wiling out. I don't know how he's so open. This is a good scheme all the time. Not taking anything away from him, but it's a, it's a good tricky scheme. Yeah. And Hendon Hooker is fucking wiling too. Yeah. Obviously well, now not hurt, anymore, but had a couple of down games there, but well, he's got an ACL towards ACL. Yeah. yeah. Shit. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, he's yeah. bad. He followed Longer. too closely. Failed to you on the cross. Were you not watching the South Carolina game? Nah, man. It was he tore it in the South birthday. Carolina game. Did yeah. he? Yeah. Um. So for them. you know, but again, with with him, you got the big year of production this year with with Hooker really coming alive. And isn't um uh, the other guy injured too? Um, Cedric Tillman. Cedric Tillman. Tillman's injured. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think I collected some stats on some him. Some tightrope surgery on his ankle. He had a high ankle sprain. Had the tightrope surgery performed in September of this year. He's been back, but he's been in the back of late. He's he looks back and healthy. But he's a big dude, six a, three. A bit of lack of fifteen. A bit of lack of production from from Hyatt in the in the twenty one twenty seasons. Obviously, the quarterback position wasn't where it is currently. Um, and again, maybe some of that due to Tillman being out, uh, you know, the scheme seemed to really center kind of around him and scheming yeah. him, um, in those kind of bunch and, and Heupel's formations. definitely his turn in the corner in 22. Yeah. Uh, stuck with Heupel and, and, you know, look at that. You stick with a, with a coach for a while and, and maybe he could actually get some players in a system and a, and it's a funny culture seeing him, It's funny place. seeing him now. And like, he was like a Heisman trophy candidate. He yeah. was like a Heisman trophy finalist. And I'm like. This dude looks like he just got off the couch after just drinking <laughs> a twelve pack of Bud. Bunch Light. of Molson. Nah, he's a, he's a Bud Light. Canadian. Yeah. He, he looks like a Bud Heavy. He guy. looks like a oh, really Bud Heavy guy. Wow, my I mean, kind of guy. Let's I'm go. going Bud Heavy over Bud Light all day. Uh, it depends me. what kind of day I'm having. If, if, if it's gonna be a matter. long day, then if I'll fucking Bud Light that bitch the, all day. If, if we're in the tri-street here, I can't drink Budweiser. <laughs> Why? Gives me the runs. <laughs> mm. Mm. All right, who else? Glad I do that. All right, one more guy, because he was just popping up at the top of all these stats, too. Rasheed Rice out of SMU. Mm-hmm. Riley's a big fan. Strong. Well, that must mean he's good. Uh, <laughs> Lock it in. Good height, 6'3", 206. I like that. Didn't yeah, grab his your bra. Didn't grab his birthday. Uh, that's blank here on my stat sheet. But uh, big improvement from 21 to 22. Uh, this year, he is just marking stats. 156 targets. <laughs> 
That's so many. Second, actually. 96 receptions. That's good for fourth. 1,344 yards. That's good for second. 14 yards per reception. 10 touchdowns. That's tied for 11th. 11 drops, but I don't really care. 17 forced missed tackles. 593. That's good for third. Uh, 3.05 yards per route run. That's good for 10th. 11.2 A dot. Slot percentage, 17.3%. Mostly playing out wide at 82.5%. 11th in missed forced tackles. So just... Second, fourth, second, tie for eleventh, third, tenth, eleventh. Those are the those are the rankings of all these random stats of his for targets and receptions and yak and tackle force and yards per reception. Just cru- yards per route run. Giving you the crushing the shit. Giving you the big production with the with the bigger frame. Right. Uh, so that's he, and if you're helmet scouting, which <laughs> he'll certainly he hasn't uh, quite worked out for Cortland Sutton. Been all right these last couple of weeks, but Cortland Sutton was a pretty big prospect, pretty valuable dynasty asset at, at certain points in his career. Um, Obviously, Russell Wilson. I don't know if you're helmet scouting shit, too, too much from SMU. I mean, what about Carlos Henderson? Well, man, if that man could just get his head right by my love, <laughs> he was the uh, what did you call him? Like the 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 white panther, like he, the one you can't find. He, can't, he we, there was like no tape you could watch on Carlos oh, Henderson. Oh, the white oh, buffalo oh. or white whale? The white whale. The the white cheetah. Great, great the white, white buffalo. Great white buffalo. Great white buffalo. A lot of white animals. White. <laughs> Mike White. Carlos Henderson. Uh, had potential, but I think yeah. he just never showed up to training camp, I think. I think a Trent hammered. Taylor went to SMU as well, he too. Did. He sure did. Mm. <laughs> um, Hot in them streets for a second. Big, big, big production this year. Decent production the year before. Um, I, I don't know what they're counting as a breakout age there. Um yeah, I didn't see the, he, he's not even on the player profilers right now. So, so yeah, I mean he he he'll get hot, I'm sure, unless mm-hmm. there's some other weird reason that he doesn't and if if he seems like he tests well at the combine and be athletic, which seems like he might be able to be. Um let's look up that 40. Really uh really could be a nice little riser there and and the, the who's the Iowa State uh wide receiver? He's got a million targets too. Hutchinson? I don't know. Maybe Xavier Hutchinson. Rasheed Rice projected 40 times. 4-3-6. Woo! Boy, fast. Now, I don't know if NFL Draft Buzz ever has... I feel like what they have is accurate or not, but... I Googled it. There it is. So, that's an interesting prospect. A lot of stats there for your pleasure. Interesting. Got to track that guy as we move forward. Xavier Hutchinson. Just wanted to squeeze him in for... I thought, you're, I thought you were talking pleasure. about the Iowa wide receiver, Charlie Jones. No, Iowa State, oh, okay. Xavier Hutchinson, 6'3", 205. Charlie Jones does have a lot of targets for at Iowa, though, as well. 161 too. targets. That's a lot of targets. That's a fuckload of targets. 107 receptions. What is that, like 15 a game? That's a lot. That's a fucking lot. All right, let's get out of here. Cedric Tillman, he's another guy that, yeah. that people yeah. were, were high on at one time. Like you said, there's going to be a whole bunch of guys. If we miss somebody. Marvin, Marvin Mims is another guy high, sure. high on people's lists. Hit him Didn't below. Into those stats, but. Let us know about him. Uh, we'll, we're going to break down. We're going to have videos for all these guys individually and multiple conversations about them collectively um, as we go throughout the offseason. Mock drafts and fucking other mocks people on mocks. On gotta, mocks. Got to mock it up before you fuck it up. That's yes, right. sir. That's my motto. Appreciate y'all for joining us. Let us know who we missed in the comment section below. Tell us uh, who's your favorite guy. Who are we too low on? Well, I mean, we didn't really like say who we were high on at this point. But Jackson Smith and Jiggle, baby, number one. Let's go. Yeah, that's probably fair. All right, uh, you know, you know the deal. Leave us a five star review. Go to RevelryBruco.com. Buy the t-shirt. Patreon.com. Slash the FF Dynasty. Hit the running us. backs. Come join us on the Discords. Yeah, stay tuned. Maybe in the next day or so, we'll drop the running back section. We're going to go record that right now. I got some work to do on the graphic side to give you guys something to look at for your pleasure. So if you're listening on the podcast, go check out the YouTube channel because we're putting in work over there. Heaven forbid the stats aren't in there correctly for your fucking format. Yeah, I mean, I got to do all hey, that extra listen, work. We lost a follower last year because Jason had put some data wrong, so Ooh. he is serious about it. The guy was very upset about it. He was going to tell his son about it. And then <laughs> yeah. and then we, we had the wrong data on the same data on one of the player pages as the last guy, and he was 
very mad. I think he thought we did this full time and it was like a real job. Little does he know. Like, like, what kind of I've joke got is so this? much shit going on. Yeah. yeah the I, good, good fucking riddance. That's I what I have to say. pasted like Drake London stats into someone else's. Yeah. If we did video. this for a living, this shit would be buttoned up and tight as fuck. Yeah. We'd have some. Would be a real tight butthole around here. Yeah. <laughs> Lube need, everywhere. Need a couple more five dollar hollers to get <laughs> yeah. uh, to get on the uh, or subscriptions. Just keep subscribing. We'll get yeah. there one day. Hit that like button for me. That's for the algorithm. Zuh. I'm about to get out of here, but I got gray sweatpants on, so you might see my ding dong if I stand up. Okay, why do you wear those then? <laughs> you know, for the ladies. Accents my facial features. What the fuck? Well, that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace.